Uh, we're excited to have some presentations about what's happening on Wilson Street. Uh, we run what's called the Development Tracker. If you look, go to our website in the upper right-hand corner, there are about 1,500, hotel, uh, 1500 apartment units and about four, 350, 350 hotel rooms just on that one street alone, which is what, four blocks long, five blocks long. Uh, so we're gonna hear from two great development teams today about their projects, doing the bigger projects on the street and what's happening and have a discussion about what's happening with housing and, and everything that's happening in the, I don't know what you call that, the, we'll just call it the Wilson Street, I don't know, the northern part of downtown, yeah, the yes, Isthmus. Oh, yeah, yes. the Isthmus is only a mile wide at that point, so it's not much land. So we're excited to have the team from Walter Wayne Development and Quad Capital Partners here with us. Before though, we've got a couple of announcements. This is what I'm gonna cue Heather. Heather's the only other DMI employee on today. We've got several events happening, so please do join us. We're, we're jamming a whole month's worth of events into one week so that we don't uh, touch the holidays too much. So we have really nothing happening next week, but this week we've got some more events. Obviously today's economic development, but you're already here. You don't need to know about that. We have a What's Up Downtown breakfast tomorrow morning. Uh, the 15th, Thursday, the 15th, from 7.45 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the beautiful Edgewater Hotel. Uh, and we're going to have MMST Superintendent Dr. Carlton Jenkins join us. So please do come for that important discussion about education in downtown and, and what's happening here around the city. Uh, it'll be directly followed by a behind the scenes. So we're combining really two events at once. So you can join us for one or both or either. It is behind the scenes of the Edgewater Hotel. So yes, this is a, 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 one of my favorite ideas. Uh, I've been in a lot of harder houses in hospitality. Uh, so we're gonna see a little bit of that, but we're just gonna explore the grounds. It's a really impressive grounds and bigger than most people even think uh, because of how many different buildings and different layers they have. And so we're excited, Amy Supple, our on board member uh, and potentially new economic development committee chair. Um, the board will be voting on that next week. Uh, I, Dan and, and, and Nathan, I think you probably have, she has your vote, so that's good. Uh, so Anne is stepping down. She's done four years uh, here with the committee, and that we, that's term limited out. But we're going to say a big thank you when she's actually here, but she has done great, great work. So please do join us tomorrow for either of those events. And our final big event of the year will be on Friday morning at 8 a.m. We have our quarterly Madison-Milwaukee Downtown Exchange. This is our exchange between us and our friend, our sister organization, Milwaukee downtown to try to create better connections between the two downtowns of the largest cities uh, in the state. A huge thank you to Reinhardt. Uh, this idea uh, came from Reinhardt, came from Nathan himself, and we're excited to have our third of our four series. We're going to have an next five next year uh, because of the calendar. We had a, a bit of a snafu with some scheduling uh, earlier this year. We're excited to talk about placemaking. Uh, placemaking is a big term, and what, what happens? How do we look at plans, and how do we look at or specific places to make downtown more of these magnets for, for things that are happening. We've got uh, several exciting projects. We're gonna hear from our friends at Milwaukee Downtown. They actually have a position in their team that does this work. So Gabriel Yeager will, will be going over that. And then they're gonna talk about a couple of projects. They have a really massive dog park plus sort of development in with it uh, is very exciting. And they've got a couple other projects they're gonna discuss, including their downtown plan, which is right at the end of the line. And we're honored to have Alan Arton, who's here in the room today, who's the chair of the city's uh, ad hoc a team committee on the Lake Monona waterfront. Alan gave a presentation to this group uh, three, four months ago or so. So we're excited to hear an update there. They're really moving very nicely with that project. The final three teams have their final date. Circle January 26th on your calendar at five or six o'clock, Alan? I think it's at six. Six o'clock. The three final teams, uh, <clears throat> James Corner Field Operations, Sasaki and the agency will be, will be discussing their final proposals. Uh, so Alan will be giving an update there tomorrow. And then we also have our friends from Lakefront Porch. Emily Tavora will be talking. And I know Susan Schmidt Design is working on that project. So huge thanks to, to them. And they're going to be giving a presentation as well. And we'll open it up for Q&A. So please do join us. That's a virtual event tomorrow at 8. No, no, I'm sorry. Friday at 8. 8. I think that is the update. Does anyone have any questions about everything that's happening at DMI? All right. Fantastic. So we are going to hear two presentations about two of the bigger projects that are happening on Wilson Street. We're honored to have uh, Dave Diamond here with Walter Wayne Development. Drove up from Rockford this morning in not easy weather. It was raining sideways when I took my dogs out at 5.30 this morning. So thank you for being here. We're gonna hear later from Dan Canale and, and, and Rebecca Prashka 
uh, from Potter Loss and from Quad Capital Partners, not respectively. I would flip those two. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but they're going to talk about their project at the, the SWIB site, the State of Wisconsin Investment Board site at 121 East Wilson. But we're going to start with our good friend, Dave Diamond, to talk about 179. And we now know, we all counted this morning, it is eight stories high of the right. 10. I think like right. seven of us said we all drove in this morning mm -hmm. and saw that it was eight stories high. We all counted. So Dave, right. the floor is yours. All right. Very good. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me uh, to share with you a little bit about the Adria. So as Jason said, uh, we're building a, a 10 story here. So I, I guess maybe a quick background. One quick second. Just want to make sure, Dave, uh, Susan, Ron, Tara, can you see the presentation? Good, thank you. We just want to make sure we get this right. Yes. Yeah, right. yep, absolutely. Yep. So, um, so I'm a developer, Walter Wayne Development, and I'm partnering with uh, Apex Property Management. Bruce Bosman is the owner over there. He's been here in Madison for quite some time, and he owns uh, quite a bit of real estate downtown, and he and I partnered to start redeveloping uh, um, properties that he has. So we're doing some stuff on our own. We're doing much with Bruce Bosman in terms of our redevelopment. One of those projects is the one in front of you. I picked this picture for a reason this morning. <laughs> Mark, I contemplated that Zoom. I yes, tell you, Jason, yes, seriously. Yes, Mark, but, yes. uh, nope, I'd rather be here. But this is the view of the second floor of the Adria. So the Adria, the Adria is the Adria because Developers like us pay stupid amounts of money to name a building, and the Adria stands for healing with the use of water. So we are positioned right uh, on uh, Wilson and Henry Street, overlooking John Nolan, and then beyond Lake Monona. So this is a luxury apartment building of, as Jason said, 10 stories, eight which are done. And uh, this is what we call the podium. This is the second story on top of the second story, which... Uh, kind of works its way out beyond the main building. And we thought this would set up perfectly for a recreational area. So we, are, we have this pool up there that's included in the project. Um, we, we base our, all our projects are kind of based on three pillars, as you'll see as we go through this quickly, is uh, we, we try to put a sustainability element into our projects. Um, Stress-free living is very important, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then the social connectivity is, is the third pillar of any development we do. So um, sounds like a nice little speech, but it, we're really very serious about it. Is uh, Before we think about bricks and mortar, we think about how we're going to use this location to do those three things. So it's very, very important to us. So, so one of the social amenities you can see, which I guess also transition, transitions over into stress-free living, is, uh, is the pool deck. Uh, we're, we're quite excited about that. Go to the next slide. Um, we also have a health and wellness facility. So on this podium deck where you saw the pool, there is a, a yoga um, yard out there that it will be for outdoor yoga classes. And so part of the soft programming of this building will be our health and wellness center, which includes a fitness center. Uh, infrared saunas are a part of this uh, health and wellness center and uh, as well as the outdoor pool I had mentioned. And uh, there's a pet run on the roof that I think is listed there um, up on the top of the 10th story. There's a complete green space with uh, a complete pet run up there. That's pretty exciting. Um, and um, a couple other smaller amenities there that I won't, I won't bother with here in the essence of time. But so it, it includes this health and wellness program um, that uh, will be a part of the project. But we can go on to the next slide. Uh, in terms of relaxation, uh, we have a uh, solarium at uh, the Adria, which is pretty exciting. That is also displayed off the podium level that you saw where the pool is. So we have this incredible green space um, with um, all live nature <laughs> that will be presented within the solarium. We're, we're pretty excited about it. It's something we haven't done before. And so the design element on that was actually very challenging to get all the glass done correctly and make sure the heating and cooling worked inside. So we have this very relaxing uh, solarium space. And then right off of that is, um, is a recreational room where you have um, you know, pool table, ping pong, shuffleboard, lounge area, multiple flat screens up and around uh, that you can reserve this space for your own party. So you can go up there and relax as a tenant in the building. And then adjacent to that space is a full 
uh, working kitchen and, um, and, and full dining table. So if you're living in the building and you'd like to host Thanksgiving with your family and friends, um, we have a uh, full kitchen and dining room that's separate from the gaming and, and um, social room that you can use uh, for some event like that. Um, and, and then the double doors all open to the adjacent space. So you can use all that space. You can have the fun enjoyment of the recreation along with the, with the dining experience. And then as part of the relaxation, there is a, a lounge uh, kind of like higher end lounge off the, uh, the corner, southwest corner of the building. That's all glass that overlooks the lake. And that's more of a, a lounging area where you can go in and sit and quiet with a book or kind of enjoy that space and the views of Lake Monona off of that second, second story. Um, next slide. <clears throat> and there's a look at it. So that's the kind of what we're calling our formal lounge that sits right on the corner of the building overlooking the lake. Yep, next one. <clears throat> this is a little quick look at what the feel of the socialization and fun in the recreation room looks like. And let's see, we'll keep traveling through this slide deck. And uh, yes, so we also have a business hub that's also um, right off of the solarium. And that is, uh, will accommodate a conference room, Zoom rooms that are um, soundproof. So you could go in and there's a desk there, adjustable desks that we put in there with very comfortable uh, chairs. And uh, you can do a Zoom meeting from uh, these various Zoom rooms that are available um, right off the solarium slash library Zoom room. So we kind of call that our business hub. Every development we do, we're now putting in business hubs because our tenants want to work from home and they'd like to leave the apartment, you know, their home and, and go someplace else for a little bit of the day. So we put in these productivity spaces uh, which uh, for us, we call it a business hub. Um, we've, um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep going here. So we'll go to the next one. <clears throat> and there you can kind of see a list. I don't know if you can zoom with your, if not, that's okay. But that's just kind of an overview of the amenities that we have within the space. So you can see that I won't go down and list many of them I've already, I've already listed, but uh, gives you a little feel for what we're doing within the building as a whole. And then what I'll have you do is toggle over to the other deck I gave you. We'll just take a look at the outside of the building right there. So there is the, uh, a look at the Adria once she's up and, and uh, built. Uh, we put a lot of glass appointment into this um, and uh, to give it a softer feel. Uh, I kind of like how the design ended. And as you can see on the corner, you go into a lobby right there to the elevators um, where you see the overhang down there on the first floor. And then as you travel to the left, you'll be going into a micro market. So we're, in, we're putting in a micro market, which is like a mini convenience store for our tenants within the building. It'll be, um, it, it'll be not attended. So there'll be a point of sale system there where you, you're on, kind of on your honor. You grab the stuff you want, you go over, and with technology, they've got a really cool way of taking, you know, as we've all seen, take an inventory of what you want and uh, through barcoding and then boom, you're in with a credit card and you're on your way. And so we're, we're very excited about the micro market. We haven't done one of those before, but we think this is the ideal location. So we have 207 units in this building uh, that comprise two bedrooms, single bedroom, single bedroom with dens and, um, and studio apartments. And, um, and, and given our market study that we've done, it, it's all market rate. Um, we are not um, you know, affordable housing developers, wish we were. I wish I understood that well enough to be able to do more of it because the city needs it. And I wish we could be more of a part of it. But as I get kind of going in the Madison market, we started with market rate and, and hopefully it'll expand beyond that at some point. Uh, but, um, but that's the Adria. Um, we're excited about it and we open in July 1st, we will be moving people in and uh, Stevens Construction has been doing yeoman's work. They're on schedule and uh, they're telling us July 1st, we're going to be moving people in. So we'll be pre-leasing March 1st. Fantastic. Yep. That's good to know. What questions do we have for Dave? Thank you for the presentation. Any questions? 
either virtually, we've got uh, about 30 of you on virtually or anyone in the room. I'll start. How quickly do you think you'll be fully absorbed? The question was for those online, how quickly will the uh, uh, cards be fully absorbed? Yeah, great question, Gretchen. The, um, we're thinking one year. The market study we did tells us it's going to be 18 months to be it fully, uh, you know, full. But so far we've done three before this, and they're filling up in half the time that we think it's going to take. So I don't want to be overly optimistic. So property management thinks six months. That's crazy. I think it's going to be a year. <laughs> but the market study says 18 months. We'll see how that works. Just to note, they do have a pro you have a project, what? Three blocks away on yes, Wilson Street. The compass. Yeah, yes. the compass. The, right next to Vendor Yards, um, which is a, how many units? 61, 61 units and was full in three months. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you also have a project just on the edge of downtown, the Emerson. Right. Yes. Yep. That's uh, with the commercial. That's mixed use with commercials. That's 53 units. And um, that leased up about the same. You know, we, we opened it in the summer and by October it was full. Yeah. That's. It, it's a it's a similar story, right? For for us as we work here in Madison. I was just talking to Dan. I'm a regional developer, so I could be in Illinois, I could be in Indiana, or I could be here in Madison. We have an office here in Madison. We have one in Illinois. And when I'm not in Wisconsin in Madison, the story is completely different in terms of the aggressiveness of what's going on. It's fun up here, you know. Rents seem to be tracking with cost, including interest rates, right? So. Um, if rents weren't increasing in line with that, I think uh, that we'd, we'd be a little more concerned about this project. I think Dan and I'd be very concerned about all what we're doing. But uh, so Madison is a very healthy market and we hope it stays like that. Um, but um, yeah, other other questions. Can you answer parking? Questions about parking? Yes. <laughs> so we have underground parking. Great question. I did not mention that. Yes, we have underground parking and um, we are over by um 18 stalls i believe in terms of the requirement so 1.1 or something like that yeah dane county across the street has i think we've talked to them and they like they like to do some sort of sharing you know I, I don't think we have enough space or the logistics would work to do that so it's all private to the tenants and and families what what we're thinking about doing here is um what your question made me think of we're thinking of taking two or three units and, and making them uh, available for friends and family that visit. You know, if you're going to host your family in, you'd like mm -hmm. a place for your family to stay. And so right now we're working through the logistics of that. Um, believe, it, believe it or not, there actually could be some reasons why we legally can't do that. So we're kind of working through that to make sure that's all done correctly. But um, great question on the parking. Follow up on parking as part of those conversations and yours is up, built, and approved, so it doesn't apply. But the city right now is going through a transit overlay district that's going to decrease the maximum parking. Would that have impacted this project? Um, yes, it would have. And I, I, I can't tell you the actual numbers. I'm not that granular on it myself. But um, um, there were quite a few discussions about that. That's a great observation. Yeah. I so think, would it have dropped it below one to one for your dwelling units? I think the, there's a possibility that that could happen. Yeah. And I use the term possibility because I'm, I'm not as detailed on it as other guys at workforce. But yeah, I remember conversations about that and them being very concerned about that. But yeah. I have a follow up. How, does, how would that affect, say, the, the parking um, mm -hmm. requirement dropping? How would that affect the rents? Um, I don't think it would affect the rents at all. I mean, again, that we have extra parking. I think we would have lost that. Um, I don't think it would have changed the parking spaces that are available for each unit and the costs related to that. I, I don't think that would have impacted it at all. We got a quick, quick question here, but um, from Ron. But I, I want to note that we do have a discussion. We had a discussion just last. Friday, we invited uh, many of you and several of you were there. Colin Punt from the City's Transportation mm -hmm. Department did a discussion on transit-oriented development. It is available live, not live. That's that's one of the dumber things I've said in a while because it was last Friday. It was, it was recorded. Yes, it's on our YouTube channel. 
So check that out. Colin Hunt goes over for about 20 minutes in our transportation committee meeting. And we had several economic development committee members there that did ask questions on this. And he goes over uh, in some detail, not as much detail on the parking days that I talked about that, but some detail. Uh, this is moving very quickly through the city's uh, process. I think the TPPB has already met, I'm sorry, the Transportation Policy and Planning Board has already met on it. And they're hoping that the council will move on this in their first meeting in January, which I think is January 4th. I can't remember for sure though. So just wanted to say that. Uh, Ron, uh, next question and then Gretchen right at. Thank you very morning, much. Ron. Thank you, good morning. I think we all know that the uh, Wilson Street corner is fast becoming um, uh, developed and redeveloped uh, with, with your project, uh, one in 131 West Wilson, uh, potentially the jail being re, um, rebuilt. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the um, way in which uh, delivery trucks will be accommodated? Um, I also think that there's going to be an improved bicycle corridor there. So how will that experience be for vehicular traffic, uh, pedestrians and, and, and bicycles? Um, with that level of um, activity going on. Yeah, Ron, hey, good to see you again. And by the way, those trees you see in that rendering are the original trees that were there. <laughs> this Great. is always an important thing I know you and I've talked about before. So first, good to see you. And please know those trees are still there uh, uh, after all the yeah. demolition and so forth. But so Ron, um, the the nice thing about I like about this project is Henry Street. There is no access point to any house or you know resident or business on Henry Street when you you know you turn down our way. Um, we're the only ones now on that street and have access to our parking garage, and so we will be setting up delivery on um, uh, both DoorDash and you know all the other deliveries plus. <laughs> Um, people moving in, those type of deliveries, all that will be happening off of Henry Street on the parallel parking that we're going to be allowed adjacent to the building. Uh, obviously, we hope most of that delivery stuff goes down into the garage and there are elevators down there to unload and go up to your apartment. But you're talking about, I believe, all deliveries um, other than just moving in. And so I think this works out perfectly for Henry Street to be available to us uh, and because we're not in conflict with other residents that would normally be parking along the street. Now there will be parallel parking, you know, for for anybody in the downtown area. That's not exclusive to us, but it's our understanding we're going to have parallel parking along the building. Did did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. And and I asked the question of a little bit for everybody else's edification as well. So just a note to. Uh, there's a long discussion about Wilson Street and different modes of transportation several years ago. Um, the East West Wilson was redone completely uh, up until this intersection. There is a scheduled project to be from uh, be Henry right outside of your building all the way to Broom Street and then a little bit deeper and they're redoing that intersection next year. There's massive issues with sewer, uh, 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 I think it's wastewater, wastewater. Uh, and so they were, they're redoing that whole street. There was extra money put in a TIF and a tip, the TIF was actually expanded to pay for that. And there is going to be a complete redo of East Wilson Street once the Judge Doyle Square projects are done. It was originally supposed to be just the hotel, but now I believe they're probably going to wait until after the apartment project is done. That is uh, sandwiched in between where the Embassy Suites project that Morton is building now and then basically the Great Day. Uh, and that will be, a, that's, I think it's supposed to be a 200 unit apartment building. There's conversations right now with, with obviously with Beitler. Beitler's uh, is expiring though. Their, their agreement is expiring at the end of this year. Uh, so I, I don't want to, I, and I doubt we'll hear much more before the end of this year. And then we'll probably hear a lot at the beginning of next year. So East Wilson will be done as a whole new street and there will be new striping, including bike lanes and things like that. That'll happen along the entire street. So if you need more information on that, let me know. Susan was a huge part of those conversations for years. So thank you to Susan. Uh, for that help as well. But just give that update for you all too. Uh, Gretchen. Uh, I, it was a parking question comment. So we sort of passed it. Uh, anyone else have questions for Dave? He'll still be here obviously once the team from uh, Potter Ross <laughs> and Quad Capital Partners First Martin Group give their presentation. Excellent, all right. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much for being here. All right, we're gonna shift chairs. We're gonna move around a little bit. As uh, you guys are all ready to go, too. 
We don't even need to shift chairs, really. Right. Yeah, yeah, the camera will pick you up. It'll so. find Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the camera loves Dan. So right now we're going to talk about that. We're, we're, we're meeting with our friends Dan Canelli with Quad mm -hmm. Capital Partners. A proud, I, I think a proud, I hope a proud DMI board member. Longtime uh, employee of the city of Madison and a downtown resident. So we're very excited about that. And then we've got Beth Raj, I'm Dr. Ashir from Potter Lawson, the architects of this great project here at 121 East Wilson, the what is affectionately known as the SWIB site uh, right now. So the floor is yours. Great. Well, uh, I'll get things started and then uh, Rebecca and Doug and I are going to tag team this a little bit, but very excited to be here and appreciate the invite. Uh, and, and great to hear about the Adria too. So, um, you know, another exciting project downtown. So shifting uh, up the street a little bit over to the other side of Wilson's, uh, Wilson Street, we're gonna talk about 121 East Wilson. Um, first kind of just quick background. So as Jason mentioned, uh, I'm Dan Canelli with Quad Capital Partners. We are the investment management uh, arm of a Ann Arbor developer called First Martin. And First Martin has kind of expanded their reach nationally with really a focus on high growth, college towns, STEM driven economies, uh, Madison um, being kind of high on the list of a place where we see a lot of potential and want to continue to invest. Uh, I've been with the company now for about a year and uh, spent most of my time kind of thinking about this East Wilson Street project, but also looking for more opportunities around town. So. Um, you know, happy to talk about anything anybody else wants to chat about in terms of other sites or opportunities uh, in Madison. Um, go ahead to the next slide, please. Sorry. So the, the site again, 121 East Wilson Street, you can see it there, uh, kind of in the heart of, heart of it all here in, in downtown Madison. Uh, the site has been occupied by the state of Wisconsin Investment Board for many years. They are moving to a new building over by Hilldale. So we picked up the site uh, in, I guess, early or mid 2021, and have been uh, working on a very exciting plan for the for the prop for the property for the last uh, year or so. And uh, looking forward to, to chatting more about it. Go ahead. So just to kind of give another a little more sense of the site, you can see on the right the pin drop thing. Uh, Kind of hones you in on the specific location, you know, overlooking John Nolan Drive, overlooking Law Park. You can see from the picture on the left the sense of the view opportunities from this property. We're super excited about the Monona waterfront. Uh, Alan and I spoke the, the other day about it. Uh, you know, appreciate his leadership on that. And uh, as you'll see as we get into the design, we're thinking about ways that this project can really integrate with. The very exciting vision that's happening there. Go ahead. Uh, you know, the project is, we think, very well aligned with uh, the city's plans. Um, you know, identified for redevelopment many years ago in the city's downtown plan, uh, Capital View height limit. Uh, we did get uh, urban design plan commission and city council approval back in the fall, that process was quite smooth. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're really delivering a project that aligns with what has been in the city's uh, vision for, for many years. Uh, just some basics on the building, about 337 units, uh, similar to, to Dave's project, uh, kind of a mix of studios, ones, twos, and a couple of threes, uh, market rate, uh, housing. Um, however, you know, worth noting that some of the studios are quite small. So we think those will be a great kind of workforce housing opportunity for folks that can enjoy a small space and still have access to all the wonderful amenities in this building. Uh, you can see some of the, the information on the left there about the location, you know, great transit access, great walk score, close to everything. Citing DMI there. Uh, yeah, pull, Thank you. pull some numbers. <laughs> I think that was from the 2020 DMI or 2021 DM State of the Downtown Report. So always good to, to, to use that and cite it appropriately. Uh, so go ahead to the next slide, please. So now zooming in on the ground floor of the building, just wanted to kind of share, uh, you know, for the for kind of downtown stakeholders like us, what sort of the experience of the ground floor will be. So uh, the building again is 14 stories tall. So what you see here is, you know, if you kind of imagine yourself on East Wilson Street, what we've 
designed into the building is this promenade in the middle. So you'll be kind of naturally invited to sort of walk into this 30 foot, five foot wide corridor that goes through the middle of the building and actually kind of under a portion of it and then out to a plaza that will be perched about 40 feet above John Nolan Drive overlooking the lake. So we, you know, we made the decision to kind of give up some of the residential opportunity and really pull the commercial space all the way through the site to create what will be a very, uh, you know, I think very exciting public outdoor terrace space uh, overlooking the water, place to, you know, place to dine, place to kind of enjoy the views. In terms of the uses on the ground floor, you can see on the, on the left side of the page, uh, we're thinking a restaurant, again, with outdoor dining, with views over the lake, uh, you know, a retail suite, you know, maybe that's a fitness use, uh, and a coffee shop on the front of the building oriented towards Wilson Street with some outdoor seating on Wilson Street as well. Then on the other side of the page, uh, you know, of the building, and this is kind of an early concept at this point, but we're envisioning a food hall. So a multi-tenant space, think small vendors selling a variety of different types of cuisine. Uh, we did uh, engage a, a food hall design group to lay it out. Um, they created a, a great plan for like eight individual vendors. You know, again, think variety of different types of food, a bar in that space, kind of down by the, the lake view. So, you know, we're thinking this is a great place for lunch, a great place to hang out at night, you know, go to the, the, the kind of chef driven restaurant on one side or go hang out at the food hall on the other side, enjoy the views of the lake, wander through the promenade, uh, et cetera. So very exciting ground floor, something we've composed very thoughtfully. Uh, and, and, and we really think this could be a great destination for the community. Focusing on traffic too, do we want to talk a little bit about pulling some loading off, off Wilson here? Um, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do is be really conscious. This is for you, Ron, too. Um, pulling traffic off of Wilson Street, um, knowing there is going to be a lot more units here, a lot more activity. Um, and so we've done our best to accommodate. One really exciting feature is the most common size U-Haul. We're able to get that off the street and into the parking for move in, move out. Um, not your giant, you know, Vanguard moving vans, but your typical U-Haul will be able to enter the parking ramp to minimize disruption on Wilson. And then also loading, um, we push that away from the other residential building that is Marina over towards the DOA building and also trying to keep that, um, you know, functional stuff that's necessary, less sexy, but um, pulled off of Wilson. Yeah, go ahead. I think the next few are some images of just the design. So. Yeah. Or Rebecca, if you guys want to. Yeah, the, so this is the view from Wilson Street. Um, and we were fortunate to have this site in the scale of the site in order to get these two towers sort of break up the facade along on Wilson Street. So it doesn't feel like a wall of a building. It has a really nice um, scale towards the city side. And there's a, a, a nice courtyard. And then you see the promenade that kind of goes through the middle. It's interesting because there is a seven foot of slope on the street and um, we go from on the right hand side is a sh the shared loading area down to the entry into the parking um, on the left hand side of the screen. Um, but we paid a lot of attention to the way the building feels at the street level to um, accent the street. And then the, the interesting pattern of the, the focus of the building is to provide a lot of daylight, a lot of um, glass um, for the apartments and the residents that live there. Um, but one of the ordinances we have to meet is the bird or the bird glass, a bird friendly um, ordinance. And so that's where you see this pattern that's happening on the building where um, towards the base of the building where there are more birds, there's a little bit less glass and there's a sort of random pattern of uh, metal panels that tend to then go away towards the top where you have less birds and um, getting more glass kind of at the top of the building. The next slide. And this shows a detail of the promenade um, with all the sort of activity that could occur there. Uh, there's landscaping features and lighting so that'll be exciting at night. Um, and then there's access to either side of the promenade for retailers with signage. Um, to really um, encourage people to go down the promenade, use the space and get all the way out towards the lake. 
If you look through there, you can see there's a almost like a little bridge, and that's the second floor um, where we are connecting the building. Um, so it's open like you saw on that first floor plan um, um, between there to get you all the way out to the lake. This on the right hand side, that there's a spot for a coffee shop, which is kind of set back, um, which will have more sort of outdoor dining uh, along Wilson Street. And then on top of that is another green roof sort of in that courtyard. So some outdoor space for the residents. And then on that floor, uh, there is a fitness um, room for the residents as well. We're really excited about the activation of this at Wilson Street and what that will do for, for downtown. Next. This shows the terrace uh, overlooking the lake. So uh, below that is all the parking floors. There are four levels of parking. Um, there's at least 20 feet of slope um, from Wilson Street to John Nolan's side. Um, um, just right under that terrace, you can start to see some vines that we're going to grow there. Um, actually, on that lower floor will be a dog run area and a um, dog lounge and dog wash and all that um, will occur on that lower level. So people could actually get outside on that lower level. And then this view is um, looking at where the restaurant um, would be with the outdoor dining. And then a view from John Nolan, um, you can see the sort of podium of the building uh, where the parking um, floors will be, and then the terrace, and you can see the uh, promenade kind of in the center of the building. Um, we've broken up the building into three facades there, so there's uh, a lot of glass uh, to take advantage of the views. And then the 14th floor is set back, and we've got uh, one half of the building on the 14th floor is an amenity uh, space. We will have a pool um, on that floor, um, as well as a host of other amenities. So there's a terrace overlooking the lake on this side, and there's a terrace overlooking the city and the downtown. Unbelievable on the views other side. to the Capitol. Some community room that are indoor outdoor space, um, golf simulator, and you know, reservable entertaining spaces for all the residents with with, again, just unimaginable views of the city. Not quite ready to review those renderings yet. Right, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. but it'll yeah. pique your interest later. Well, we'll invite you back, right? Yeah. 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 And the, on that 14th floor, the amenity deck, the pool on the 14th floor will be on this side of the building, yeah. kind of a zero edge infinity pool. Uh, so it's the amenities space on the 14th floor is going to be <clears throat> just outrageous. And then this is a view at night. Um, you know, we have a lot of dark evenings in Wisconsin, and we wanted to do something <laughs> on the building yeah. Yeah. to make it very interesting at night and to um, activate the street, and kind of, you know, um, illustrate sort of the activity that's going to occur on the promenade, but get that on the building as well. But do it in a subtle way so that it's not something, you know, that's garish or you get tired of over time. So we have this subtle kind of, we're calling it like a candle lighting um, of the building where it will um, light up some of the metal panels, and some of the details that we're working on now. Paying special attention to, to just, you know, soft security lighting at the ground floor being downtown, um, unique to this project will be a fully staffed um, concierge desk for residents in the lobby as well to help with that security aspect, but paying attention to what that ground floor looks like experience wise for pedestrians, residents, and visitors. A couple more things to mention. We talked about this before, but super excited about the Monona waterfront, <clears throat> a collection of some of the images over the years. Um, I know there's recent uh, conversation of revisiting the idea of passenger rail, and maybe that's downtown. Um, the, the lower right there is from back the old uh, <coughs> rail conversation yeah. in 2010 or whenever that was. Um, so, you know, again, we think we're, we're very excited about whatever, you know, about the ideas that are emerging from the waterfront and looking forward to figuring out how we can connect with those. Uh, just some of the benefits of the project, you know, sustainability <clears throat> is woven throughout the project, starting with just the location and the access and bike transit service beyond this new uh, Wilson Street cycle track, uh, great transit service, et cetera. Um, you know, we believe that this promenade and the food hall and just the, the, the way that the ground floor is composed will be a fantastic amenity for downtown. Uh, the project's going to create a lot of tax base, which 
Uh, I know there's been some conversation about putting a, a TIF district around this property. We're not seeking any support from the city. So whatever increment is generated this, by this project can be redirected into projects like the waterfront. Um, you know, adding more residents downtown, of course, supports local businesses. And we uh, really try to focus on a local team for all of our uh, design and consulting work. And quick, yeah. have you been in touch with uh, any of the waterfront design teams about the potential connection? I, you know, casually, I talked with a couple of them, uh, just say, hey, you know, we should keep in touch, but we haven't, we haven't really gotten into the mix with them yet. Uh, uh, just hitting on the project team, you know, I mentioned we really, we've really really tried to engage local groups, starting with Potter Lawson, uh, who's been fantastic to work with, has Going done an amazing job. Uh, I was going okay. to mention that, yeah. uh, that, you know, and, um, you know, we're, 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 we're Potter Lawson's favorite client. I'll, I'll say that right now. I'll take a Yeti. I, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, legal, uh, Reinhardt, of course, because, you know, why accept anything less than the best? Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is, open a door. I should yeah. get you a Yeti. <laughs> I would also I'd also just point out that a lot of these firms are DMI members, uh, as Rebecca alluded to. Uh, Gretchen and CBRE uh, sold us the building and has been really helpful along the way. And I mean, one thing that I've learned from the last year with this team is sort of seeing Madison through other people's eyes. And my colleagues who have done development around the world really have commented about how in Madison it's like this great tight knit group. It's just easy to find the right people to work with. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, DMI. Uh, so it's been a great process, a great team, and uh, we're excited about the, the progress we're making. I think we just a schedule left. Yeah, last week we just had the project schedule, um, you know, got through mm -hmm. the city approvals in the fall and uh, heading towards uh, construction this year and opening the building in 2025. And I think that's it. So happy to happy to answer questions, and uh, yeah, looking forward to bringing this uh, new new project to downtown Mass. Kudos to the design group on the bird class. <laughs> that was awesome work. Thank you. That's a really challenging thing to figure out, and you guys did great work on that. Thank you. Nice work. Thank you. Questions for the team at Bud Capital or Potter Lawson. When in 2023 would it come online? Uh, 2025. Or 2025, yeah. Uh, not sure yet. We're still, you know, working through the clearing conditions with the city and, um, you know, construction bidding and, and so forth. So, don't know yet. Well, you paid so many compliments, you didn't get any questions. <laughs> hey. I've, I've got one. It's for one. How are you? Yeah, meeting the new ordinance with the size of the footprint you have. I think we heard the question. Just make sure it was stormwater and the new ordinance. How are they meeting the requirements for stormwater? Right. Yeah, we've got um, green roofs on the project, and we do have a cistern that's located um, between the two buildings, the state office sure. building and our building, sort of down below on sure. the site. There is a sort of tank underground that's going to collect the remaining water that's not collected by the green roofs. Uh, more questions. Sorry, we're going to pull up a copy of the development tracker to sort of look at all of these these uh, projects together. Um, you know, we're very thankful for both Walter Wayne Development, Park Capital Partners, and Potter Lawson for being here up in the upper right hand corner there. That hot pink button. <laughs> it's not my favorite color. Thank you to Reinhardt for this. Uh, we appreciate it. But as we update this, uh, since we're thanking everybody here today. Yes. Uh, this is. A, uh, just a reminder, this development tracker is updated uh, every, uh, God, almost every weekend I do this because there's literally something new every weekend. I added two new projects and multiple new photos just this last weekend. Reminder, this is only projects that are in the public eye. So if you've begun the neighborhood meeting process, that'd be the first sort of public place you'd be, the project would be on here. 
And it, we keep it on to about six months after construction just to, to understand that as well. But if you don't mind zooming into that sort of Wilson Street area, yes, it does look like a bowl of Fruit Loops. There's that much <laughs> development happening right now. But you can see here, we mentioned a couple other projects, but uh, starting with that King Street or all the way down towards the Hairball intersection, you've got the Lakefront uh, Porch Project, which is happening right now. Uh, they're raising money as we speak for a great uh, end cap, the sort of cap of the well. It's a really great project by Ken Psyche. That area really does not have great green space, even though Law Park is right there. But good luck getting from First Settlement to Law Park. It's not an easy thing to do. And so this helps provide some of that green space. If you go just to the, to the west there, uh, the folks at NCG Hospitality have a 45 room, I think it is, hotel. Uh, uh, they're going to renovate the old Rubens building. Uh, that is slated for construction I, I, soon, any day now. Uh, their lawyer is in the room and he won't be able to answer the question. So why I'm asking him, I don't know. But we hope any day now they'll start construction on a 45 unit project there. We've obviously got if you continue to go up the street as the traffic does from east to west. That's the project we were just talking about there directly across the street. Uh, there are about three stories up now on the new Embassy Suites Hotel. I think that's about 270 rooms um, as well. And then there is going to be an apartment project. It was once proposed by Mortensen, but, but we're sort of working through that right now about a 200 unit project that is sandwiched in between again the great day and that hotel rich and helen from stonehouse read about a year year and a half ago finished the novu a project which is I think, what 175 units 172 units including with some affordable housing uh that project is finished on a podium of a very significant i can't remember the number 600 ish 650 parking garage space i'm really happy rebecca's here yeah. it's more of the details than i know <laughs> obviously we have the new reno the <laughs> new renovated uh mmb building uh which was done just several years ago and then if you continue to go down these are another hot area uh you have obviously potentially a new jail project uh you have a uh, uh, terrence walls project called the moment which is right now proposed and i think it's 275 263 apartment units 15 stories. Now he's early on in this process. I think it's UDC just tonight. UDC tonight, right? So they're they're taking a look at that project directly next door. Randy Alexander is proposing. I think it's 300, yeah, 335 micro unit building a 16 story tower where the Shortcrest apartment is. So wedged right in between uh, Dave's project, um, Adria, and then uh, Terrence's project, the moment. And then there is one other project just down the street there at the intersection of Broom and Wilson. This is Bear Development. This is a fully affordable project housing project where the American, can I remember, it was like the American Cosmetology Institute, I think something like that, was there for years. They're going to gut that building and then add on to it. There's an L-shaped parking lot around the outside. Bear Development is a group out of Racine, Kenosha, Racine, one of the two, one of the largest actual um, affordable housing developers in the state. Uh, there's a, so a lot happening on just Wilson Street alone. There's also a four unit uh, live work building being built directly on Hamilton across the street. And then obviously the condo unit, uh, condo building, uh, Barracuda that was finished maybe two years ago or so uh, at, the, at the prow of that Henry, Hamilton and Wilson uh, intersection. So there is a lot happening there. So uh, please do visit this website, of, you know, to, we update this all the time. But look at that, just Wilson Street. It is 350 hotel rooms-ish, 325 and um, 1,500 apartment units. And almost all of these projects are pretty deep into the process so we anticipate that they'll all happen we don't anticipate you'll stop construction in eight <laughs> stories so we feel good about that so things are happening uh, now any questions or discussion about what's happening on wilson street one question i'll ask myself is well why uh, and so people ask me this question all the time so i'll just ask it to myself um a really interesting survey came out yesterday from Rent Cafe that ranked us as the fifth hottest apartment market for small cities in the country. Um, and just some statistics they said with 97% Madison rentals already occupied, no less than 29 renters competing for each vacant apartment in 2022. They stayed on the market for just 20 days. That's 12 days shorter than the national averages. We heard anecdotally that in downtown there's about 10,000 apartments, just shy of 10,000. Your, your project will bring it over 10,000, so kudos to you. Um, the, uh, we had about 20 to 30 openings total after August 15th, after move-in. Uh, so very limited supply uh, there as well. We do think this is relatively short-term, though. There's new projects coming in uh, all of the time, as we know. In the student housing side, uh, there's significant builds right now. Uh, Findorf is, is 
boy, three stories up already on the OLE project, and then a newer project that was just announced in Port Campus uh, directly across the street from the Hampton Inn at the intersection, uh, that sort of round intersection of Dayton, Bassett, and Johnson Street as well. And there is a potential other project coming uh, down the pipeline. So there's there's lots happening. We count about 4,000, about now 4,300 units uh, of apartments being built in downtown, many of them coming online in 2024, some uh, coming online in 2025, a few of them coming along in 2023, yours, I think the Continental Project should be opening any day now right. on East right. uh, East Washington Avenue uh, as well, plus some other hospitality projects, including the Moxie, uh, which is uh, in between the Spark Building and Ravinia Courtyard on the 800, 900 block of East, uh, 800 block of, thank you, of East uh, Washington, and then a, a smaller apartment building wedged between Mifflin and Dayton on the 700 block, a small boutique hotel there across, uh, basically behind Salvation Army, uh, which, which is on um, West Wa East Washington. And they're actually, Salvation Army has started their apartment project just in the last few days as well. And that is not up to date on the development tracker. So now I need to go back to my <laughs> office and update that. So, questions overall about what's happening here? Alan. What's up with the uh, um, proposed hotel in the old Madison College site? Great question. Way to, way, to, way to break that positive momentum, uh, Alan. Uh, 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 <laughs> well, we don't, there's unfortunately not positive things happening there. So Wisconsin, uh, WHBC, Wisconsin uh, Historical Preservation, uh, thank you, Wisconsin Housing, Housing, Housing Preservation Corp Corp Corporation, uh, Mary Wright and Mike Slavish and the team did propose it was a 12 story affordable housing, about 200 some units. You were all were 225, something like that. Yeah. You all were involved in that project. That project has been scrapped completely. Uh, unfortunately, it is not happening. Costs were just too expensive from what they told us on construction and financing and all the rest. However, um, there is discussions with a, I don't know what's public or not public here, but there is, there is, I don't think this is public, there is conversations with a, a hotel group about renovating the existing building, so the old Madison Central High School, Madison College most recently. And I think that project could happen irrespective of what, ha what will happen on that new large site where the arch used to be uh, that basically faces uh, uh, West Wisconsin Avenue and First Methodist Church there. So I would suspect we'll hear some more news in, the, in, in, in 2023 on that project. I think it's just too valuable of a site. Uh, so but we time will tell on that project. I, I don't think I'm at liberty to say anything more because I'm getting a lot of people staring at me not to say anything in this room. So I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> what I can add to that. Thank you. <laughs> so Drury still has the long-term ground lease with Madison College. Drury is under contract with another developer to assign those rights for a new project for the entire site. There we go. Live up-to-date information. Thank you for getting me out of the box that I painted myself in. <laughs> Other questions? Anyone virtual? I know we've still got about 30 people on, so it's good to see you all. Oh, hot darn. There we go. All right. I think this will be our final Economic Development Committee meeting of the, of the year. Thank you. We've gotten a lot accomplished. We've run a lot of different meetings. We've created a lot of different policy statements, a couple of different things. Before we go out, as, as, as we think about what we're going to be doing in 2023, we have a very good plan. For those that haven't seen, DMI created a new strategic plan uh, that will be taking it, well, it's effective now. We just, the board passed it, what, uh, six weeks ago or so. Uh, great, great document, 68 pages. So we'll ask you to read that thoroughly, and we'll have a quiz at our first meeting. No, just kidding. Read the four-page executive summary. We have a new mission statement. It's to make downtown Madison, economically strong, inclusive, equitable, vibrant place to live, work, and visit. And we've got great new values, got great things happening. We're going to be restructuring our committees. So when we meet in January, we're going to go over that more. So we're very proud of this document. So please go to the Our Work page and you can check out there. If you want to get involved, we're going to create some task forces on many of these issues. You all are experts in a lot of these fields. Let us know how you want to get involved. We, we, we are an organization uh, for our members, run by our members. I just talk a lot, that's all. But I talk what you guys want me to talk about. And then last, I wanted to, many of you were at the event, but just two weeks ago, we had our 2022 release of our State of the Downtown Report, which is facts and figures about live, work, and play here in downtown. This is an excellent document. Huge thanks 
to our friends at Nelson Schmidt. It's, it was supposed to be shorter and now is longer than ever, uh, but it has some great narrative, people's stories, project stories, and, and in the actual PDF itself, the, the digital reader, you can, uh, there's live clickable links to dive deeper into this. This sets the work that we do and is fact driven of what, what, what we're doing moving forward. So please check that out. Again, we have a couple other events. Join us tomorrow, the 15th for two events, 7.45 a.m. at the beautiful Edgewater Hotel for Dr. Carlton Jenkins from MMSD. And then right after you can do a behind the scenes tour of the Edgewater Hotel, they may let you use the Mangler. Doubt it, but they may. <laughs> Mangler is a uh, machine that you don't want to know why it's called the Mangler, but it's dries sheets. I actually don't think it's they do it in house. Cool. It's crazy yeah. cool, but actually, I don't think they have one. They should not. Never mind. You can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. Let's take it to another hotel to be able to do that at some other point. And then do join us for the Madison Milwaukee Downtown Exchange on uh, 8 a.m. on Friday. It's a great event. Sign up now. It's virtual. All of these will be recorded. Thank you all for your support. Thank you to Reinhardt for continued use of this room. We really appreciate your partnership. And thank you to Anne, who's not here, for her amazing stewardship and leadership of this committee over the last four years. She's an absolutely incredible person, if you don't know her, and we we're so honored to have her as our leader. She's remaining on the DMI board, so she's not going too far away. She's working on some major projects here in downtown, including the CDA Triangle area. So a huge thank you to Anne, and we hope if the board approves, which I'm sure they will, Amy Suffolk will be our new chair here in a couple of weeks. So let me know if you need anything. If we don't see you, have a happy holidays, and we hope to see you over the next couple of days. Thank you all very much. We'll talk to you soon.